Welcome to this Arnold Clifford Knitwear tutorial on excellent blocking. This tutorial is part of our Confident Knitting series, 12 projects to teach you 12 techniques from the world's best knitting designers. This is Hunter Hammerson's Evolve Cowl and this video tutorial is going to show you how to block this cowl using flexible blocking wires to get the best possible effect. You'll also find at the end of this video a link to a second video that shows you how to block a cowl with minimal equipment and as I say you'll find that at the end of this video tutorial. So what is blocking and why would you bother? Blocking is the process of soaking your finished project and then laying it out to dry and in its simplest form that's all there is to it. However, when you've worked a lace pattern such as this one where you've got combinations of yarn overs and decreases, blocking can be used to stretch out your knitted fabric and when it's then dry it holds its shape and the lace pattern will really sing. So if you compare, this is fresh off the needles and you'll see that the edge is a little bit curly and whilst you can see the lace pattern it's not really shining, let's put it that way. And then this is a blocked cowl and you'll see that we've been able to pull out this lovely um, scalloped effect on the edges and the lace pattern is just much, much more visible than it was before it was blocked. Blocking is a little bit like blow drying your hair in that it's a process that needs to be repeated every time you wash your project. Obviously something like a cowl is not going to be washed terribly often, but if you're um, cowl is getting a little bit limper and not looking quite as beautiful, then re-blocking it uh, will really transform it and it's very straightforward to do. The first stage of blocking is going to be to soak your cowl in some hand warm water. I've added a little bit of a no rinse wool wash into the water and that just helps the water to penetrate into the fibres. You could also use a standard wool wash, but if you do that, you'll want to rinse it out afterwards. So our blocked cowl is going to go into the water and we're just going to make sure that it's all fully submerged. And then we're going to leave it to soak like that for approximately 20 minutes or so, just to ensure that the water has really penetrated all of the fibers. Once your cowl has had a nice long soak, you're going to remove it from the water and carefully squeeze out as much water as possible. You don't want to wring the cowl, that would be twisting it because that can damage the fibres. Just give it a really good squeeze. Once you've squeezed most of the water out of your cowl, you can fold it up in a towel like this and then press down on it really nice and firmly. You can do it by carefully walking on the towel or just use your hands and that will remove most of the excess water. Once your cowl is damp but not dripping with water, you're ready to start the process of laying it out to block it. You'll notice here that we have woven in the ends of the cowl. All the ends have been woven in but they've been left nice and long and that's because in the process of stretching out the knitting if you've trimmed the ends tight they can sometimes pop through to the right side. So I tend to leave them nice and long like this and then when blocking is finished and your cowl's dry you can trim them off. For a really perfect finish for your cowl, you can use flexible blocking wires in order to stretch it out really fantastically well. So I'm using this sort of flexible wire that you can bend, but it always wants to spring back straight again. And alongside the wires, we're going to need some pins that don't rust when they get wet. Some kind of straight rod that you can use to hold up the cowl. These straight knitting needles are absolutely perfect, but any kind of long straight bit of wood or plastic will do fine. And then we're going to want something to suspend the whole thing on. And for that, I'm going to use a drinks bottle. 
and I'm going to prop it up a little bit further with a coffee pot, but you can use literally anything, some books, anything that's going to help to lift it up and you'll see why you need that in a minute. So the next task is to thread our flexible blocking wire all around the top edge of the cowl and we're going to do that just by going under and over alternate stitches along the cast off edge. Once you get back to the beginning again, it's a good idea to just overlap the two ends of the wire by a few stitches and that'll just help to keep everything nice and neat. So you see we've done a few stitches there which are through both ends of the wire. Then pull the shorter end through and open up that top edge so that it's nice and nice and wide. We're now going to thread our blocking wires around the bottom of the cowl and for this particular design we want to create a scalloped edge and so mark, you'll find marked on the chart for this pattern is the point at which you're going to insert your wire to pull down that scalloped edge. If you've got a design that wants a straight edge just weave it in on every other stitch as we did along the top but to get the effect that I've just shown you with a kind of scalloping then we're going to go in behind this stitch here and then we're going to go around the edge of the cowl going behind the same stitch each time. When you come to the end then you again you're going to want to overlap the ends of your wires through a couple of stitches just to help make everything nice and firm and in fact if you have a long edge and you want to join in more than one wire then again just overlap by a couple of stitches so that you've got a section that's held by both wires. Once you've threaded both the top edge and the bottom edge onto your wires the next thing to do is to take your knitting needles or similar straight sturdy piece of wood and you're going to thread them through the cast off edge to make a cross shape. So one through like that and the other is coming across like this. And now what you're going to do is you're going to balance that cross on a suitable height of object so that your cowl hangs down. So I tried first of all with my drinks bottle and unfortunately that's not quite tall enough. So I'm going to try popping the coffee pot underneath it. And now we've got the right sort of height. Once you've got your cowl suspended and you're happy that it's the right height, you're looking for it to be scrunched a little bit at the bottom because you're going to stretch it out. So you need a little bit of slack at the bottom, but you don't want lots of fabric all scrunched up there. So once you're all set, the next job to do is to start pinning out the lower edge of the cowl. So start by just doing it roughly. I'm pinning into a surface here that's got some blocking mats under the towel, but you can equally use a carpet. You can pin into really whatever, whatever you normally would block onto. And I tend to work around like I'm dividing the circumference into quarters first of all. And once I've got the edges pinned out roughly then I'm going to go around and divide each section in half again. And I'm going to start to stretch it out further.
you'll notice I'm putting a pin into each of the points where the cowl is going to be scalloped out. Once you've roughly pinned out your cowl, the next job is going to be to fuss with it slightly. So here I've noticed that the um, coffee pot handle is just pushing against the edge of the cowl, so I'm going to move that over slightly. And I'm just going to adjust where that top section is sitting. And my next job is going to be to go around and measure how far apart each of the pins are, because in order to keep the cowl really nice and evenly blocked, I want the pins to be equally spaced all the way around. So I've measured the spacing between the pins and they were all between 10 and 12 centimetres apart, which isn't too bad. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go around and I'm going to adjust them all so that as far as possible, they are all at 12 centimetres apart. And I'm going to do that by unpinning and just pulling back slightly the ones that were a little bit closer together. I'm now happy with the spacing of the bottom edge and the scallops. So I'm just going to now just look up at the top again. And because I've now got the cowl under tension, you can see perhaps that the um, cast off edge is just sagging a little bit. And what I'm going to do to help that is just add another couple of knitting needles in to help support those edges. So I'm literally just threading them through again at the cast off edge. There we go. And all we need to do now is leave the cowl to dry. Here's a view of the cowl the other way around, just so that you can see the full majesty of the uh, blocking arrangement. It rather makes it look a bit like a lampshade, I think, or some kind of space rocket. And finally, don't forget that, of course, you'll need to repeat the blocking process each time your cowl is washed. Just like blow drying your hair, it doesn't last longer than that, I'm afraid. I do hope you found that tutorial helpful and that you'll feel really confident about blocking cowls in the future. We're able to create all of our video tutorials and keep them ad-free thanks to purchases from our online shop and the support of our customers. If you'd like to find out any more about Confident Knitting, then do click the link up top here, which will take you over to our website where you can find out all the details. And if you've enjoyed this video tutorial, why not subscribe to our YouTube channel and then you'll be sure to know when our next video is released. You can do that clicking the button down the bottom here. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye bye.